sampling distributions and the central limit theorem. So today I'm going to cover finding sampling distributions and verifying their properties, interpret the central limit theorem, apply the central limit theorem to find the probability of a sample mean. Sampling distribution, the probability distribution of a sample statistic. It is formed when samples of size n are repeatedly taken from a population. Sampling distribution of sample means is as shown below. So I have this bigger population and I'm going to take little samples inside and no longer are each person in my sample going to be x. x is going to be the mean of each of these little samples that I've taken. So the mean of sample means stays the same. It is equal to the population mean. Yet, the standard deviation changes a little bit. It is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. It can be also called the standard error of the mean. So, for an example, if the population values are 1, 3, 5, and 7, find the mean variance and standard deviation of the population. So for the mean, you add them up, divide them by 4, you're going to get 4. Variance, plug it into the formula, you're going to get 5, or you can use Excel to find this. And same thing with standard deviation, plug it into the formula that we've covered, or take the square root of the variance, and you get this. You can also use Excel to find each of these, but I will not go over them right now as it is complete review of chapter, I think, 1 or 2. So graph the probability histogram for the population values. So in this case, you can see that it's a uniform distribution. All the values have the exact same probability of being selected, the 1, 3, 5, or 7. Each have a 1 out of 4 probability of being selected. No one is more higher probability than the others. So list all the possible samples of size n equals 2 and calculate the mean of each sample. So these means for the sampling distribution of the sample means. So construct the probability of the sample means. Now find the mean variance and standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Like I said, mean stays the same. Variance is divided by n, which in our case was 2. And then you can take the square root to find the standard deviation, or you can plug it into the formula or Excel and divide it by the square root of n. So these results satisfy the properties of a sampling distribution of sample means. Now, you can go through all of this that we have just done, or I'm going to go over how you would do this on Excel. So, if we were to graph the probability histogram for the sampling distribution of the sample means, you would notice that it's symmetric and bell-shaped, and it approximates a normal distribution. So now that leads us into the central limit theorem. If samples of size n greater than or equal to 30 are drawn from any population with mean equal to mu and standard deviation equal to sigma, then no matter what the distribution looks like before, the sample means approximates a normal distribution. The greater the sample size, the better the approximation. So if the population itself is normally distributed, well, it continues to be normally distributed, yet it is going to be skinnier because we took the standard deviation of this one to get this one, we divided it by the square root of n. So therefore, our standard deviation is going to get skinnier, it is going to get smaller, which also, in fact, ends up making it taller. So in either case, the sampling distribution of sample means has a mean equal to the population mean. The variance is divided by n, and the standard deviation is divided by the square root of n. So any population distribution will turn in, the distribution of the sample means, n greater than or equal to 30, is normal. And if it is normal, it's going to continue to be normal. But this is a little bit higher because it's divided by the square root of n, which makes it skinnier and taller. Now, phone bills for residents of a city have a mean of 64 and a standard deviation of 9. Random samples of 36 phone bills are drawn from this population, and the mean of each sample is determined. Find the mean and standard error of the mean of the sampling distribution, then sketch a graph of the sampling distribution of sample means. So first things first, if the mean is 64, then the mean of the sample means is also going to be 64. The standard error, or standard deviation, 
is 9 in the problem divided by a square root of 36 because as you can see right here there are a random sample of 36 phone bills. So it's 1.5. And now since the sample size is greater than 30 the sampling distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution with mu equal to 64 and standard deviation of 1.5. The heights of fully grown white oak trees are normally distributed with a mean of 90 feet and standard deviation of 3.5. Random samples of size 4 are drawn from this population and the mean of each sample is determined. Find the mean standard error of the mean and sampling distribution. Then sketch a graph of the sampling distribution of sample means. Then again, 90 is the mean, 90 is going to stay the mean. Now the standard deviation is going to be divided by the square root of 4. As I just said, mean equals 90, and the square, the standard deviation 3.5 is divided by the square root of 4. Since the population is normally distributed and the sampling distribution of the sample means is also normally distributed, we can draw this as such. Now, there is something that we have to cover now. The z-score has to change because the standard deviation had to change. But that's all that changes. It's still value minus mean divided by the standard deviation or standard error. But in this case, the standard deviation is divided by the square root of n. Because we are finding a z-score dealing with a sample means. So, the graph here shows the length of time people spend driving each day. You randomly select 50 drivers from 15 to 19. So this is what I care about. So their mean is 25 minutes. They spend, what is the probability that the mean time they spend driving between each day is 24.7 and 25.5? So before we can find this out, we have to find some information first. So first things first, means 25, 1.5 divided by the square root of 50 equals 0.21213. Now I can take the larger number minus the small number in my norm.s.dist and that will give me the probability just like it did in the previous chapter. So I'm going to minimize this over here. I'm going to open up Excel. We're going to plug this information in. So what I want to do first is I'm going to go to norm.dist because I do not have I do have a mean and a standard deviation so I know it's not standard and I'm going to scroll down here and find norm.dist or I can type it in so now I want to know between 25.5 and 24.7 so my first one I'm going to type in is 25.5 with my mean of 25. And then here, I know that the standard deviation is 0.21213. And this problem is just like the problems we did previously, but the previous standard deviation that they gave us has to be divided by the square root of 50. Now you can also do that in here in the calculator, so that's what I'm going to do. So I can do 1.5 divided by square root SQRT of 50. And as you notice to the right, it calculates 21213 for me. I just want to show you that you could write it in here or you could previously find it. And then it is true, just like it was in the previous chapter. Hmm. Said I had too few arguments. So x was. 25.5, mean was 25, standard deviation was 0.21213, and true. And so we're going to say less than. No, nope. let's just go with true. And then let's enter. There we go. Now I can minus the small one. Now you guys will not have to worry about this because you don't have a Mac but it should work just like it did in class in the previous one. So I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to minus the smaller x value, which is 
24.7. Oh my goodness. There we go. And that gives us 0.91215. And if we continue on our PowerPoint, we will notice that it also gives us the same thing. Now, of course, you can do as we covered in Chapter 4.5.2. You could take the normal one with our new standard deviation, transfer it into a z-score, then use norm.s.dist if you want, or you can use norm.dist, and it will go ahead and give you the probability. So the only thing that has changed from 5.3 is that I have now included a sample size and therefore you have to take the square root and divide it by the square, I mean you have to take the standard deviation divided by the square root of 50. That's the only thing that changed. So let's look at this one. If you are asked, a bank auditor claims that the credit card balances are normally distributed with a mean of 2870 and a standard deviation of 900. What is the probability that a randomly selected credit card holder has a balance less than 2500? This follows just as it did in 5.3. So I would literally go over here and I would hit norm.s, I mean norm.dist. My x would be 2500 because I want to know less than that. My mean is 2870. And my standard deviation This Mac is having problems with me tonight, which I normally do not say, but it is. And then true. So I plug in those stuff that's normal. X, I want to know less than. There's my mean, my standard deviation of 900, and true. And that will give me my answer just as normal. That was exactly how we did a problem in 5.3. So the only thing I have changed in 5.4 is now I'm going to say, well, what if I randomly select 25 card holders? Now I have to take that into account into my standard deviation. So I'm just going to simply go to the previous problem, look at that 900 right there, divide it by square root of 25, because 25 is my n, and then I now have the correct problem. So that is all that we changed in 5.4. And we get the exact number that the PowerPoint has stated. So. Today, we have found sampling distributions and verified their properties, interpreted the central limit theorem, and applied the central limit theorem to find the probability of a sample mean.